If you're looking for unique in Project 70, one question remains, why are you not collecting this artist? All designed by Andy Friedman. So I'm very, very excited about this release because it's different than this on-demand product. So as of this video, you have one day and 15 hours left to buy your Spotlight 70 packs. Make sure you jump over to the Topps website and pick up those packs. They're just $19.99. But welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris, otherwise known on Twitter, and Instagram is at CRT underscore sports cards. And my website is your number one reference for everything related to Project 70, and that is simply CRTSportsCards.com. And also, I have to say, we did it. Thank you so much. We set a goal last night of having 50 likes on the video, and as of the time I recorded this video, we're at 91, so almost at triple digits. The question is tonight, can we make it to 100? So if you like this video now, or you like the video by the end of this, do us all a favor, hit that thumbs up button. And so with it being Tuesday, and the fact that there are no print runs at the moment, we of course can buy the cards that were released on Monday. We can still of course buy the cards that came out this morning. What is the news of the day? What is earth shattering out there? And I think the biggest news, just from a sports card economy perspective, is the fact that PWCC has been suspended indefinitely from eBay, maybe removed from the platform completely going forward. We'll see what happens with that. But of course, PWCC has had their suspicions here over the many years of shield bidding and making all the auctions go for a lot more than what the card was really worth. I don't think it really relates much to Project 2020 or Project 70, but I do know there are fans of the set out there who had complete sets vaulted with them. So we'll see what happens, but that was sort of the biggest news of the day is having PWCC suspended and removed from eBay altogether. But now one thing here that is related to Project 70 and Project 2020 is my recent fascination with getting cards graded. And of course, this all comes from being at the National and seeing just how many cards are out there that are graded and the fact that a lot of dealers and buyers just want that sort of convenience and that comfort level of a card being graded. And so I have gone through the 40 to 50 cards that I wanted to potentially grade from my shipments. I narrowed it down to 14. I was, of course, using a loop to eliminate the ones with corner damage. But one thing has come out of this, which I found very, very interesting. I am a purist when it comes to this set. I do enjoy the fact that the card comes in that magnetic case. There's something nice and niche about that fact. But as I've taken these cards out, as I've taken out the Lauren Taylor, Mike Trout, the Ben Baller, Mookie Betts, even the Chuck Styles, Josh Gibson, something has really hit me. I really like these cards more out of the case, even though they're not graded. And now I'm not saying I'm gonna go open up all 300 plus Project 70 cards and however many Project 2020 cards I have, but I'm just thinking, if you're a fan of the artist and you don't care about resellability, if you just want to enjoy the artwork, crack some of these out. I think you're gonna be really amazed at how well these are printed when they're taken outside of that magnetic case because even though they're clear, they're not see-through. And so the artwork has been a little bit muted through that case. Now the one artist that may mind that we remove their cards from the cases is going to be Natural. When you go to his 19 card mosaic, one next level design that he did with his cards is he measured the gap between the cards. So even though we have cards line up five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, they don't match up one for one because he took measurements of the cards, of the cases, and that's why the clouds don't match up 100%. So we'll just keep that between you and I, we won't tell him. And so while Natural said it's very unique from that perspective where it lines up from left to right, one to 19, Let's talk about the cards that are released today because there's an artist out there releasing the most unique set out there in Project 70. First up, we have Vladimir Guerrero Jr. designed by DJ Ski. We then have Thurman Munson by JK5. Michael B. releases his Wade Boggs. And we also have Blake Jameson with, I think that is, Bobby Valentine. And now the one card that I'm just not feeling today, and I'm really just not feeling the artist overall, and I did really like where they were going at the very beginning of their set, but I really think DJ Ski's Hannes Wagner was sort of the peak of his set. When you have this Vladimir Guerrero Jr., this is of course the ninth Guerrero Jr. in the set. This is though from 2021 tops. This card looks nothing like 
2021 tops. This looks more like 1971 tops. Let's all just be honest here. Black Border, iconic 50 years ago, 1971 tops. But here's the deal. When it comes to DJ Ski's recent promotions in Project 70, I'm just not feeling it overall. The Discord community eBay promotion was kind of a joke. You then had the Otani break credit. That was really confusing. You had the Tatis controller giveaway. People were winning the controller and then not getting the card. And then the, the wording of the promotion was a little bit odd. So I've just kind of lost on this set overall. But here's my biggest takeaway on Vlad Jr. here. This is a kid who is going to forever live in the shadow of his father. You have an artist here who has one opportunity to celebrate a player, and what do you do? You relate him back to Drake, and I get it, Drake, Vladimir, the Blue Jays, Toronto, I get all of that, but this guy is gonna live in the shadows of other people. Give this man his own card. Make it about Vlad. Do not make it about anybody else. And so while we're on the topic of incorrect years on the cards, we might as well talk about Michael B with his Wade Boggs. And here, this is not Michael B's fault at all. But if you went to the Topps website this morning, you saw Michael B, Wade Boggs, 1999. This card is clearly not from 1999 Topps. This card is correctly from 2002 Topps. And now this is Wade Boggs' third card in Project 7. We saw him previously with Crayola and then before that originally with F. Dot. But this Michael B. collection, this is a very, very unique set. He's taking us down a very different road than most artists are in the set. But one cool thing about this card, yes, the triangle at the bottom is awesome. You know my love of triangles, the number three. But everything about that card makes your eyes focus in on the center. And so this to me is a great 10th card in Michael B's set because this is the middle point of his 20 card journey. And now while I have not been collecting Michael B and I have recently fallen off the collecting wagon of JK5, this Thurman Munson has drawn me back in and it's all because of one simple thing on the card. Yes, it is from 1991 Tops. That is the very first set that I purchased as a kid. I was just nine years old after a card show, so 91 Tops for me is very, very personal. But it's that yellow on Thurman Munson. There's just something about the way he's used the yellow, the sun, everything on this card is so colorful. It's just amazing. I relate it back to the 1971 Tops card that I recently purchased for my set, the yellow Yankees name. I don't know if there's a connection there at all, but something about these yellow makes this card stand out so very well. It's such a ray of sunshine on today's releases. But now let's be real here. I have used the word unique several times in tonight's show, but you wanna talk about the leader of unique, you need to go to the house of Blake Jameson. This artist right now is releasing the most unique set out there. And so for all the griping of the Yankees, the 97th one today from Thurman Munson, the 14th or 15th Mickey Mantle, the Mookie Betts cards, if you want to buy cards that no one else has released before, you owe yourself to pick up these Blake Jameson cards. And here he is with Bobby Valentine, a card that he showed us at the National, one that he had to really work and hustle to get released because it wasn't approved when he made up the original drawing. But here is now the greatest thing about Blake said at this moment. When you go back to my artist rarity ranking report, his score right now is just 2.9, meaning of all of his 10 cards, the average release per player is just 2.9. He has right now six players of his 10 cards that have only been released one time in the set. Chris Bryant by himself, you've got Jared Kelnick, Brooks Robinson, Brett Phillips, you also have Buster Posey. Six of the 10 are singles. You only have a couple of cards with two. Yes, he has the Acuna, but overall under three release per player. And that is a great way to approach this set. As I said a few weeks ago, Blake Jameson is releasing moments in time. He is celebrating them. He is not celebrating careers. And this Valentine celebrates a very, very incredible moment in time where Valentine tried to sneak back into the dugout in disguise after getting ejected. And so this is just a fantastic card and it fits in so very well with what Blake Jameson is doing this year in Project 70. This will now conclude your Tuesday night 
daily download for Tops Project 70. I'll see you back here at the same place, same time tomorrow night, where we talk about the Wednesday releases in this set.